So I spent some time playing around Gemini 3. I wanted to really test its ability to create landing pages. And I have a bunch of different things that I've tried, different prompts, different strategies. And I want to kind of walk you through the things I learned uh, doing like an hour or two of experimentation last night of using Gemini 3 to generate a landing page for a lawn cutting service. You can see that it's slowly getting better as I'm trying to reprompt it and have it be redesigned until we get to a nice professional looking a sleek type of site. And then I also tried it on another application idea, an application for like crafting landing pages with AI. And you could see that the first prompts are kind of like very AI generated looking, but they slowly get a little bit better. They get more professional. You know, we get some dark mode coming and we get some gradients until eventually at the very end, we are left with something that kind of looks like this which has some pretty nice gradients and subtle background colors and some hover effects on cards. Sections that kind of just look a little bit more appealing. So I'm gonna walk you through the process and the things I've learned uh, from basically prompting a bunch of different times. And here is all of my code, the prompts. I'm gonna walk you through prompts one through eight of the strategies I've kind of applied and I'll show you the outputs. Now, before I jump into the prompting, I do wanna say I'm working on an Agentic Jumpstart course. Go to agenticjumpstart.com. If you want to learn how to use Claude Code and Cursor to become an Agentic Coder and code much faster, I have been doing this for like two years now. Ever since Cursor Composer came out and Claude Code came out, I've been playing around with these tools. I've been finding these tools have made my professional software development, which I've been doing for 13 years as a web developer, much more efficient, much more productive. And I want to share the things I've learned along the way with you all. So be sure to go check this out. There's already 819 people signed up for the early wait list. You can enter your email and I'll send you an email when this thing's done. Hopefully by the end of the year, I'll be done. All right, so here's the first prompt of Gemini 3. It has a very generic hero section with like a little uh, preview of your app. And then we have a feature section. We have a how it works section. And then we have a call to action at the bottom. Now, in order to generate this, I basically use a very simple prompt. I said, build me a landing page for an app called Page Crafter the app helps generate landing pages. So again, from a very simple prompt, you're gonna get a very, very simple output. Uh, it's not bad, it's clean, it looks nice, but in terms of like comparing this to other well-designed landing pages, you can tell this is AI slot. Okay, so then I took this approach and I said, you know what, what can I add into the prompt? Like what keywords could I potentially add in to maybe change how it looks to make it look a little bit more professional? Okay, so I tried a really simple experiment. I said, okay, you are an expert designer, okay? That's basically all I added in, and maybe a little bit more information about what the goal of Page Crafter is, and then I generated that on prompt number two. Now, based on these little changes in the prompt, you'll see the hero section actually has like a little code snippet on the right, which is probably a good idea because this will probably be targeted to developers if I were to actually like work on this because they developers need a way to quickly create landing pages and put it in their site so that their clients can have a nice looking application. Scrolling through here, we have some trusted by brand uh, banner. Looks pretty good other than it's missing images. We got a, a feature section that kind of walks through the purpose of the app. I'd, personally, I would probably add in like a whole nother row so it has just more content right now. It just feels kind of empty and bland um, from ideas to live pages a minute. So this is the how it works. And we got a call to action, which looks a little worse than this one over here. It did some things good, it did some things bad. Now, what I would probably do if this was the uh, prompt that I did, was go and take a screenshot of this and say, hey, I need you to use the call to action of this image and use it over here. Same thing with this, uh, how it works. I would probably take a screenshot of these and then paste it in as a second iterative iteration on the prompt just to make the app look a little bit better. But I wanted to just try to do one prompt at a time. Now, I will say all these prompts were completely separate chat windows. So there's no context poisoning happening. It was just fresh prompt, fresh uh, file, implement it. Um, so prompt number three, Let's go ahead and look at the output of this one. So this one is a little bit better. It's still kind of AI generated slop. You can tell it's basically just taking it from a template and putting stuff in, but it's more filled out. We have more features. We have those additional three cards that I talked about. We have a wide developers choose page crafter with a nice one, two, three, and a picture of a developer's laptop on the right. And then we have a how it works over here. This is actually the how it works, not this one. Again. Now, I do like this one better than the other ones because it has the little icons in it. So like visually, you can tell real quick, okay, you do something and then you get code and then you can deploy it. It makes sense. It's just at a, at a quick glance, it makes kind of sense. Um, built for every use case. Again, I would probably fill this section out and this one just looks pretty bland as well. Uh, we have testimonials. How does this look compared to the other ones? I don't think this even included a testimonial. Okay, testimonial and then a pricing page. The other ones didn't have a pricing page or an FAQ. So the main difference here is I specifically asked for different sections. I said, hey, I want hero, 
features, benefits, how it works, testimonials, use cases, pricing, FAQ, and CTA. And then I also added in here, I think is the most important part. I said, you are an expert designer with 80 years of experience building beautiful, professional landing pages with great SEO ranking and keyword optimizations. So throwing something like this into your prompt can make Jim and I spend a little bit more time to make the site just look that much better. Okay. And I also threw down here, make this one of the best landing pages you ever designed. It seems stupid that you have to add this stuff in, but when you add in these little, like, I don't know, power words, like professional, beautiful, it does something with the LLM and it's able to like tune in to better, uh, trained information inside of its model. And that's basically what it's outputting for you. Oh, and then also has this like call to action section with a nice subtle background, which is pretty cool and a footer. Okay. So again, keeping the prompt simple, adding in some power words is going to give you much better results than whatever this was. So if you do spend a little bit more time thinking about what you want and kind of like guiding it with these power words, I think you're going to get good result. All right, let's go down to prompt number four. This one is how it kind of looks. I think the trusted by developers banner looks better. We actually have the images. We got these little bars that you can hover over. We got some glow effects, which is pretty nice little glow effect there. It's kind of building off of like uh, how it was looking on the other page from idea to live in minutes. This is pretty nice. It has like the steps. Uh, this is, we'd probably have to like reprompt it to fix the, uh, the alignment of some of the stuff and add icons to this overall. It's still not better. I think I like the other one better. Honestly, it looks a little bit better. I think the only reason I kind of like this is because it has dark mode on it, but like even the call to action looks kind of bland. So what I did on this prompt, was I did a prompt to say, hey, research, do market research for this app idea. And then I want you to fill out all the sections prior with this information. And then I told Gemini to implement it. And I thought this would do better, but it actually did worse. And I think the reason it does worse is because I found the more context you give these LLMs, the worse off they often do. Because at the very end, if you tell it to design something, like the design requirements is right here. It's like nested in the middle of the context. And often when you're prompting, the thing at the very end is often what like has the most relevancy. And the thing at the very top gets lost. And there's a cutoff window with these context windows where this whole thing, granted, I didn't hit the context window in any of this, but I do think there's a recency bias when it comes to these uh, LLMs and prompting that you want the most important thing to be at the end, like the task. And then like the thing you want to focus on first should probably come next. So it probably, when I prompted this, it probably focused on the content tone the most. And I gave it like six bullet points to focus on. So it probably probably spent all of its time looking over the marketing terms and making sure that it was, uh, you know, pretty good content tone. That's the output of that one. Let's move on to prompt number six. This one looks pretty bad. I'm not going to lie because I tried a completely different approach to the prompting. And I'll show you how I did that. Basically, prompt number five was I started off prompting an LLM to generate all these different sections. So we have all these MD files that describe what should go in the section, how it should look, et cetera, et cetera. And then I had a prompt that basically said, Hey, I need you to go through all these files one by one and implement them. Okay. And I will say this approach took forever. This took like 10 or 15 minutes of just Jim and I churning on this, uh, this information. And this is the result. It's really not that great. It just looks very bland. It's very like, uh, I don't know what the word is. I mean, it does have some nice aspects to it, but overall, I mean, like sometimes prompting too much is not the answer. If you want to get good results, sometimes less is more when it comes to your prompts. And this was like the good highlight of how adding so much additional context just made the LLM like unable to make a good looking website. Granted, this is all just one prompt. I'm just testing like the one prompt theory to see how it does. And that's kind of the results. Let's move on to prompt number six. So this one, I think it looks really good. It has a nice little panel here with the glow effect. We have all the sections with the hover card effects. It's very similar to the last one. Um, testimonial, I like the pricing page. It looks pretty good. Uh, the difference between this prompt is I basically took uh, prompt number four, which was like doing all the market research. And I just threw in some additional, you know, great typography, great structural hierarchy, great uh, animated outlines on CTA buttons. Now, granted, it didn't even do some of this stuff. Because again, I think there's just too much context in this. And I think it would be better if you focus in on one section at a time and basically paste it in the same thing to have it do it. Notice how it kind of like has that like shimmer effect, which is pretty nice. Little animated effects on buttons, which probably aren't a good idea. I would probably never move the position of your button on hover. It's a very, very bad user experience. 
and it just frustrates uh, users. But overall, I mean, it's pretty good. Let's move on to prompt number seven. This is probably the best landing page I've seen. I really like the title with the little accent mark. I don't know what this is underneath the words, but it looks good. It looks modern and clean. And if you scroll through it again, it still just looks pretty good. This section looks nice, has a nice glow effect uh, versus the other one's glow effect. It was very, uh, is minimal, right? So this one, it actually kind of went up and beyond and made it look nice. And then we have the how to section, you got the pricing page, uh, you know, just a generic section, but it just looks a little bit nicer. If I were to compare this one to four, which in fact, it does look very similar to four. Like, let's just go and look at it. This is four and this is seven. Okay, so the hero definitely looks better. The bill for modern, bigger icons on the right. It just it just looks better in terms of like typography. So I think it did a better job at designing that and the spacing, the padding. Uh, what else can we do? Let's go to the pricing page. Got the pricing page. This one just looks bland. This one is more filled out. We got the gradients and the buttons. We got the most popular right in the center. So it is. it does look better. So now prompt number seven is different because I took prompt number four. I took this index file for four. And I did an iterative approach on it. So I basically pasted in this that said, you're an expert designer with 80 years of experience, building beautiful professional landing pages, etc." And I said, I need you to add subtle background gradients to the hero section, background patterns to various sections, etc." And that's kind of what it ended up doing. It added in all these different things, the pulsing animations, and it looks pretty good. Okay, so the takeaway of this is an iterative approach to doing these things. Like you can't just expect one shot prompts for everything. You have to come back through and tell it to redesign it. Tell it to fix up sections and you'll get an output that looks pretty good. I would, I would probably give this page like an eight out of 10. Instead of the seven out of 10 AI slops that we've seen, I think we're reaching like eight out of 10 territory in my opinion. But if you're a designer watching this video, you're gonna be like, no, this is still a five out of 10. And I probably agree with you. You probably have more experience than me. Now let's look at prompt number eight. This one actually looks a lot different. And the reason it looks a lot different is because I spent a lot more time going through every section by hand and reprompting it to make it better, make sure there's gradients, make sure there's subtle backgrounds. I'd go through and like say, hey, this section looks boring. Can you make it better? Can you enhance it? For example, the how it works. We have like the subtle background and the little triangles in the background. Uh, this section, I had to go through and add this little like accent to kind of break the, the boringness of going from section to section. And then I also told it to add in like more uh, testimonials here because before it only had three. Perfect for every need. Again, we have like another subtle little break there um, with nice little hover effects on these cards. And then we have a nice looking pricing page. Okay, so again, this one is not one prompt. This was me spending a lot more time manually going through, taking screenshots of everything, like taking a screenshot and going over the cursor and then prompting that in, dragging that into the prompt, making it say, hey, redesign the landing page or redesign the simple pricing page to make it look better. And this is the output that you can get. And that's what you can end up getting with. Now, you guys can be the judge. What would you give this like an eight out of 10, nine out of 10, a seven out of 10? Is it still AI slop in your opinion? Or is this a decently looking good uh, landing page? Now, before I end the video, there are some other things I want to talk about. I also tried this approach on a lawn cutting service landing page. So basically, you know, people go around cutting lawns. Maybe they need to find clients online. And so I started with an initial simple prompt of create me a landing page for someone who mows lawns. And this is what I got. And then I reprompted it. I said, hey, I need you to redesign this again with all the keywords I kind of talked about in the video. And then we got something that looks a little bit better. Scrolling through here, we have some cards. It's still pretty AI slop looking but it's better than the first one. And then I prompted it again. I said, hey, redesign this again. And then we got something that looks a little bit more professional. We got the nice typography here with the, the cursor that kind of adds like a nice little touch to, you know, trusting the brand. It just looks a little bit more clean and professional. Scrolling down, these cards look more professional as well with the typography. We got this section. If the image worked, this would look pretty good, um, but it's just a generic two split column. The benefits of choosing our service. We have testimonials that look pretty nice too. Um, but this is also something that I've seen like from a generic like Wix builder site or whatnot, right? It's just, you could probably find this online very easily. And then finally, I reprompted it again. And I said, hey, make this as professional as you can to really drive up um, conversions. And this is what it was left with. I do think this is a pretty nice looking site. There are some issues with accessibility, like this button kind of blends into the background. These buttons, you can't read them over the text. This whole moving banner is kind of tacky and it just looks bad too. But scrolling down a little bit, I mean, these sections look pretty nice. I'd probably add some icons to them. Um, we still have like the one-two split over there 
with a missing image, but I think this one actually looks very, very professional. Like, you know, someone who's going around the gated communities mowing lawns, so they're probably going to cost money, right? And then we have, this section looks bad. I don't know what they were doing here, but Jim and I kind of messed up there. And then we have a join the wait list with a image in the background that's not related, but again, it can only do so much when generating these pages. But I guess the main takeaway, if you're watching this far into the video, iteration is key. You need to iterate. Don't just expect one prompts to solve everything for you. And you need to go and research some design keywords because the more design keywords you know, the much better you are going to be at prompting and the better results you're going to get. All right, so hope you guys enjoyed this. If you guys have any tips and tricks of using Gemini 3 or something cool you've built using it, leave a comment below so we can all kind of learn from it. Other than that, have a good day and go check out agenticjumpstart.com if you want more tips and tricks about doing agentic coding like I kind of showed you in this video.